tell me a little bit about vitamin D. What are the sources of vitamin D, natural versus supplements? So vitamin D is often referred to as the sunlight vitamin because it's produced in the skin following exposure to sunlight. Other food sources can be oily fish like mackerel or herring, sardines, dairy products have vitamin D, and many breakfast cereals are supplemented with vitamin D. Orange juice in the soup that you see in the supermarket has vitamin D in it. So those are also good sources, but the most natural one is from sunlight uh, absorption. What level is considered sufficient? Uh, vitamin D deficiency, um, believe it or not, is very common worldwide and particularly in northern latitudes of the world where there's decreased sun exposure. Also, because we're using more sunscreen, which is helpful to prevent sun, um, skin cancer, we're getting less absorption. So we are seeing more vitamin D deficiency. This occurs uh, across all age groups. It's very common. Um, pediatric, older, uh, older uh, persons have vitamin D deficiency. There are many uh, causes of this. Number one, the decreased sun exposure. And what happens if you have vitamin D deficiency, you may recall the skeletal disorder, rickets, is very common. Now we're more concerned, uh, particularly in the field of multiple sclerosis with vitamin D deficiency because it can increase risk of developing the disease. And if you have MS, it can worsen disease activity. And the recommended daily allowance of vitamin D can vary from person to person, depending on age, depending on body weight, for example. There is some controversy on what's the best um, daily dose of vitamin D, but we do know that in MS, we want to see blood levels between the range of 50 at least to um, 80. And in order to achieve these blood levels, you need to have a daily dose of at least 2,000 or 5,000, sometimes higher, daily. And to really be able to see what your level is, you need to have a blood test done to monitor it. What happens if you don't get enough? So vitamin D is thought to um, control many of the gene expression that we see in, in, in MS. And vitamin D deficiency can be a risk factor for developing multiple sclerosis. If you have MS, low vitamin D levels can lead to uh, increased risk for relapses. And um, so it's so important that supplementing with vitamin D, studies have shown this can help in decreasing relapses, slowing the course of the disease, and also help in decreasing inflammatory activity that we see on MRI. How is vitamin D involved in multiple sclerosis? It's involved by uh, controlling the gene expression. There are many genes involved in the expression of MS, um, and, and MS in general is thought to be caused by a combination of genetic and environmental factors. And vitamin D uh, may be involved in the slowing the expression of some of these genetic factors. So there was a 20-year study uh, looking at women. One study had over 92,000 women. The other study had over 95,000 women. And those women who had been receiving vitamin D supplementation were at a lower risk of developing MS than the women who had lower levels of vitamin D. So there's evidence that vitamin D supplementation affects the clinical course of MS. Uh, number one, in decreasing many of the gene expressions that we see in putting patients at risk for the disease. And if you have, if you have MS, it, vitamin D deficiency can lead to increased risk for relapses, and vitamin D supplementation can help in slowing the course of the disease. So it is important to recognize vitamin D deficiency uh, by blood testing and supplementing as necessary. And also, I want to mention that in terms of some of our disease-modifying therapies, particularly interferon beta 1b, also in one study of 465 patients who had been on interferon beta 1b, low 25 hydroxy serum concentration in treated MS patients did put them at higher risk 
for disease progression over four years compared to the patients who were on interferon beta 1b with higher vitamin D levels. So there did seem to be a benefit for patients having higher vitamin D levels along with the interferon beta 1b treatment. How is vitamin D status determined? Easily enough by blood test. So it's very convenient for patients to get their vitamin D level checked and the, what we look for in the blood is the 25 hydroxy D level. Um, usually the, when you get a supplement, it's vitamin D3. And this, when you, when you ingest this, it gets converted to 25 hydroxy D in the blood and this is what we're testing in the serum. So when we look at vitamin D levels in the blood, we're looking at the 25 hydroxy D level. And if it's low, we do recommend supplementation. And the amount of supplementation can vary depending on the level of the vitamin D that's determined on the blood test. Can vitamin D supplementation be harmful? Surprisingly, there have been many studies done looking at high levels of supplementation, up to 20,000 units daily. And this has not been shown to lead to vitamin D toxicity. You really need to be on extremely high doses to, to even consider vitamin D toxicity. And we're looking at blood levels of at least 150 nanograms per mil over that amount. And even uh, with very high levels of 20,000 units daily, we didn't see those levels. So the risk is, is really quite low. What do you think is the future of vitamin D supplementation in MS? There have been many studies now uh, looking at um, supplementing with vitamin D in multiple sclerosis at higher levels. And there have been two recent studies that were done um, the benefit trial and the BEYOND trial, particularly with interferon beta-1b. The benefit trial looked at patients who had low vitamin D levels versus patients who had uh, higher levels of vitamin D, and it was shown that the patients who were on interferon beta-1b and had higher vitamin D levels did better. They had decreased activity on their MRI, they had um, fewer relapses, so there seemed to be a benefit to taking both the interferon beta-1b and vitamin D together. And, and many of our studies that are being done looking at vitamin D in multiple sclerosis are showing that higher levels of vitamin D do play a protective role in decreasing risk for developing the disease and decreasing expression of the disease if you already have it.